This one is nasty. Ladies and gentlemen, the markets are still selling off in after hours. Not a good sign heading into tomorrow and the rest of this week. It looks like the Powell panic put might just be here to stay for a little while now we're gonna get into everything you need to know about what just happened with federal and powell what's happening in the markets as well as with amc gme and how these stocks could be affected by this turbulence in the markets and ultimately how some margin calls could come out of this whole situation so the work is cut out for us as you can see here in this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section i know you guys got some comments questions or concerns so post them down below let's get into it guys markets sold off exponentially after fed jerome powell the last really half an hour of the trading day was a straight flush you only seen three green candles four green candles really the last half an hour and and and, and that's going to be uh, right about here it was not good that is very much not good and you're even going down in after hours stocks like apple stocks like facebook the qqq down another 0.14 percent in after hours this does not look good for trading coming tomorrow and the put might just be alive yet again and let me just give you guys a brief summary on what happened with Fed Jerome powell from my perspective and why the markets are reacting like this a uh, couple fronts to look at this couple different ways you can look at this number one is markets don't didn't really want to hear the hawkishness from fed jerome powell that we got because there is a banking crisis markets were expecting a dovish fed jerome powell they expected more confidence in the resolve against inflation aka they were hoping that fed jerome powell said they're not as worried about inflation because this is going to cause a lot of deflation we didn't hear deflation we didn't hear disinflation not once throughout all of this federal and powell stayed laser focused on the fight against inflation went on to say that this banking crisis is contained if it's not they have more they can do right they can backstop all deposits and that's essentially what has already happened so federal powell says the banking crisis is not a big issue but at the same time he acknowledges He'll be here to help if it becomes a big issue. And the markets obviously didn't like that, right? But the markets at the same time are realizing that if you get a Fed U-turn, if you get Fed policy that starts to look dovish, that only comes with pain in the economy. So it's like, do you want more rate hikes, more tightening, and a better economy, right? Company earnings doing a little bit better. Or do you want lo looser financial conditions in resolve to this banking crisis and the economy not to do so well? So it's really like one of those situations where it's it's a trade-off here. And Fed Jerome Powell looks laser focused on getting inflation down and he did go on to say one thing in particular that the markets have it wrong with rate cuts nobody forecast rate cuts for 2023 the stock market was hoping that someone or something would mention rate cuts by the end of 2023 federal and powell said that is not their base case forecast that is not what they are expecting to do and that's ultimately not what the markets expected because you have seen this rally in tech. You've seen this rally in a lot of different sectors based off of lower rates by the end of the year. Does not look like that is ultimately going to happen. Or if that does happen, again, if that does happen, that means the economy went down the poop chute. And that's also not what you want to hear. So it looks like the only way out of this situation is to see inflation plummet, which it is not, or to get very bad, very rough financial uh, conditions, right? The economy going down the poop chute. Both of those equations are not good. So really tech investors are caught off sides here because people didn't expect such a hawkish federal Powell. And I honestly praise, I mean, 
you got to give Paulo a round of applause to stay focused on the main job here. Ultimately, you don't want this to drag out five years, right? You don't want to see this market for five years where it's, it's up and it's down. We're focused on inflation. You ultimately want Fed Jerome Powell, sounds bad, but to break something. But something to go wrong in the economy, hopefully not widespread, to get inflation to come down. Fed Jerome Powell don't know how much this banking crisis is, 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 is going to affect the economy. It's very uncertain if this will be equivalent to one rate hike, two, three, a percent, two percent. It all depends on how financial conditions uh, tighten in the banking sector related to these banks going BK. Now, if you start to get some more downside here in the markets, that could lead you um, to seeing some margin calls. And we're going to talk about that in just one second after we run through all of the data that you guys need to know. But in case you did not watch the last video, that is really the big story uh, with Fed Jerome Powell here today. And yeah, just oh, so nasty in, in after hours, man. It, it is rough. Uh, Apple hardly green. And, and this is just a couple minutes uh, after, yeah, things don't look so pretty, guys. So just be on the lookout here. Could be time for some puts. Now, if we take a look at what happened with AMC on the day, it says you're down about 1%. If we take a look at uh, the actual charts here and pull this up, looks like AMC was down about 1.81%, up 0.69% after hours, all things considered. Pretty good, pretty good performance from AMC relative to what you are seeing in the markets. After all, uh, something like Facebook that was up like 3% today at one point, all down, what, 1.16% in regular trading? That's almost the same as AMC. I will take that as a positive any day of the week. GME, if we take a look at that one, up 35%, not a not as affected as a lot of other things, although you were up like 40, 45% at one point today, still closing up 35% is very strong. GME up about 1% in after hours. This can lead to margin calls. Now, how these margin calls would affect AMC and GME goes something like this. Obviously, this is not a, a define science but this is the best logical explanation of this if you start to see hedge funds getting margin called they need further collateral well one thing they can do is cover on some of those short positions that they have on some of the riskiest stocks right if, if you're short on oil or short on uh, healthcare or technology or meme stocks which out of those is the riskiest and which one of those is the riskiest that needs the most amount of capital because risk is associated with capital and collateral if you are going out and you're shorting apple you're not going to need as much collateral because nobody expects apple to rally 50 percent but if you're going out and you're shorting meme stocks you need more capital because hey look at that gamestop up 45% at one point today, a 50% move is a lot more likely. So there's a lot more capital actually tied up in AMC and GME. And if you even start to see broad market wide margin calls, you can get some upward pressure on GME and AMC. It's hard to tell exactly how uh, it would affect these stocks, given if the markets are going down and you're actually seeing margin calls, everything's probably going to be in some pain. But I think that would at least help GME and AMC outperform the markets, relatively speaking. It could cause a big-ass rally, though. You really never know, and that's both sides of this equation. Either it does very little, or these stocks go parabolic, right? And GME obviously just doesn't even care. It doesn't even matter, right? Now, if AMC gets good news, that's where AMC is going to have its time to shine, Let's go ahead, take a look at the numbers on AMC, GME, and then we're going to get into this very interesting article that I want to point out to you guys. It says, this is a crucial moment for AMC stock. Here is why. And we'll just briefly touch on that. We might uh, go over it a little bit more in another video. Um, I don't think it's... Yeah, it is kind of long. So we might have to go over that in another video. Nonetheless, we're going to give you the numbers here and uh, talk some charts as well. Well, so for AMC, 
24.26% short interest of free float, 125.26 million shares that are currently sold short. These cost to borrow rates, man, that's putting a lot of pressure on these uh, shorts, these, these hedge funds with short positions, not pretty. 359.76% cost of our average, cost of our max 390%, cost of our minimum at 7.6%. If you take a look at it in interactive brokers, the cost of our rates are spiking exponentially here today. 215.68%, 15.5%. Fifty shares that are currently available these these numbers are insane guys these these numbers are ridiculous so just keep that in mind imagine that imagine you have short positions uh out or a position in general that you have to pay 215 percent on you need to see some very big moves to make that worth your while on the other hand gme here while they have more of the actual you know price action right they, they they had earnings that was very good first profitable quarter in two years they don't have the same cost to borrow rates as amc so there's not that insane pressure that is put on them to the same degree as amc now the short interest of gme is almost exactly the same as amc sitting at 24.29 percent 63.48 million shares that are currently sold short cost bar average of 53.26 percent cost bar max of 73.83 percent cost bar minimum of 7.6 percent interactive brokers has about 250,000 shares available with a cost bar rate of 30.74 percent now let's get to the charts here briefly it looks like you're trying to get a it's trying to get a bounce in after hours but it's uh pretty futile and, and fleeting not much is actually happening there taking a look at amc pull this up on the daily candlestick chart you can see there's a lot of lines here there's a lot of uh moving averages here right now we were as high as about four dollars 77 cents earlier in the day today that's that's kind of where you peaked out you're back under four dollars 50 cents per share relatively speaking you're off the lows that we just seen recently at about four dollars flat now we're only at like four dollars 40 cents per share so so it's not like you're in the clear right now you want to see the stock stay above four dollars 50 cents per share ultimately when news comes out about this litigation on april 27th like we covered in the last video that's going to be uh the most important thing and that's really where amc will get its its time to shine beyond that the 50-day moving average is five dollars 50 cents per share that would be the first level of resistance that i would target and that's going to be uh this gap level between 450 and 550 if you get above 550 you're probably going to that 50-day moving average on the other hand you want to watch for support over the next couple of days at about four dollars uh, 10 cents per share and four dollars 20 cents per share that's going to be this long-term downtrending line that we have talked about extensively here on this channel now we go ahead and pull up gme story's a little bit different here right you got rejected at the 200 day moving average here today i would say a lot of that does have to do with the overall markets uh, it, it, it's that's just how it went today uh fed jerome powell day gme had earnings and the reaction on fed jerome powell day not a big shocker there now for any downside move if the markets do get bloody you want to watch 21 dollars 59 cents per share good thing is if you were a holder of gme you still have a pretty sizable gain compared to the pre uh earnings trading range of 15 to 17 dollars per share hit a high of 27 dollars per share a very aggressive rally but you really want to watch 21 dollars 59 cents at that 100 day moving average uh to see if you find support there and i do imagine you will see since even if you look, this 100-day moving average has been a very important level historically for GME. You could see you broke under this. You had found resistance here back in March of 2022. Found resistance, broke up, broke through the 200-day moving average, came down, found support at the 100-day, broke under that. Once you broke under that, you flushed quite aggressively you came up you broke the 100 day you found support for months from may until august you found support at this 100 day moving average almost religiously every time you got down to this level you bounced and then you didn't in august of 2022 and then you flushed under that 
and now it has served as resistance back here on October 31st where GME was up exponentially. Look at the wicks. Look at this move. You found resistance at the 100-day moving average. Stock continued to trend down. You found more resistance right here and and that was most recently in february and now you're back above that right now so 200 day moving average if you break above that that's going to be very very positive stock is up half percent here in after hours still you want to watch this developing story i think it's a very compelling story and very interesting story um until at least amc does get its time to shine and then i expect something similar now uh if if, if you do break above the 200 day that's going to be very good. Find support at the 100 day. That is positive. If you do not, 50 day moving average, that's going to be the next thing to watch. And you did get a lot of bullish indicators over the past week outside bar, inside bars, fast or I should say the FSTO, the fast statistic uh, indicator, and the relative strength index have all been very good and yesterday the williams percent r uh, was another bullish indicator that did flash so i think there's a lot of potential opportunity in both of these companies and i think this move in the in the downside direction in the markets is going to open the door for margin calls a lot of people are off sides and they need to get some of those shorts back on for those hedge funds that do not do that that's where you're looking at margin calls and then from there where do you cover, right? Where do you get your collateral back from? Do you cover on these short positions? Do you sell stocks? Do you sell bonds? None of that looks like a good idea besides covering on some of these risky short positions. Because, I mean, even if the markets were down exponentially today, right? Like they were after Fed Jerome Powell, GME's up 35%. It really doesn't make sense to be short on these assets in this kind of market environment after they have fallen so much. So, that is going to do it for this video. We had a lot to unpack. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.